All right, all praises, all praises. Shalom, shalom, shalom. So I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashem, Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. That's the name of the Most High God and the Son, Yahweh Shai. Um, and he, I just want to just uh, give all praises to the Most High for just uh, giving us this op opportunity to uh, edify on um, just a couple of scriptures I was just meditating on um, in regards to judgment. And, um, you know, just, just kind of just going into that. And, um, you know, I wanted to kind of move more into uh, brotherly love and to kind of co to, 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 to correlate or to have the parallel um, mindset and to show that essentially brotherly love starts with rebuke and judgment towards uh, the brothers. Right. So so if I see my brother going off, for instance, it's my job um, if I love that brother. To show um, to show that brother love by telling him, hey, you going off in this regard, you know, so so, um, you know, this is one of the biggest things that I've seen with Israel, a problem with Israel. You know, we as Israel, we we real good at banging on Esau. We real good at banging on, um, you know, some of these other nations and telling them, you know, Isaiah 14 and going into the Romans nine and, and, do, and doing things like that. Um, but one of the biggest flaws I see our people going to is not being comfortable rebuking their brother or rebuking their sister or us not being comfortable receiving the rebuke from our brothers and sisters. You see what I'm saying? So it's, it's um, we're very good at telling people their judgment, giving people their judgment and saying, thus saith the most high God. You know, the problem is as 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 um, teachers and, and people in this truth, and even myself, we're not really hip to receiving the uh, the same uh, uh, rebuke, right? And we understand that rebuke really goes into just having that mindset of, I'm telling you where you're going off at, right? So real quick, I just want to get um, Proverbs 27, and I want to get verse um, verse 5. It says, open rebuke. Is better than secret love, right? So if I rebuke you openly, you know, that's better than me just telling you, yeah, you're doing a good job when, you know, you're going off, right? And like I said, that's the problem, right? That's the problem in our people. We're not really um, comfortable telling our brother when he's going off. And we got to get better at that because that brother might not know. You know what I'm saying? So I read that again. It says, open rebuke is better than secret love. Right now, let's go to uh, Proverbs 28 and 23. It says, he that rebuketh a man afterwards shall find more favor than he that flattereth with the tongue. Right. So so if I rebuke you and, you know, like I said, we got that problem where brothers don't want to lose, you know, ox. We don't want to lose the ox. We don't want to lose Akim, you know, but at the end of the day, um, if I'm sincere and I'm very diligent on how I present that rebuke, then you're like that. Then you being a righteous man and a just man is going to sit back at, you know, one day and say, you know what? That brother Ra'am was right. Right. Or that brother was right when he told me, you know, it's not good for me to be doing this, that and the third. And this is why it's important to have a camp to be around brothers and to dwell with brothers in harmony. Right. Because if I'm if I'm if I'm going off, I need brothers to tell me I'm going off and I expect brothers to tell me, hey, brother, you're going off, you know. So, you know, so that that's just what it is. Right. You only your, your camp is only as strong as your weakest link. So if you got sin in your camp, your camp is weak. Right. But if you if you have a, a, a camp that's strong and brothers is very um, um adamant about rebuking that brother then or rebuking that sister then you know you're going to have a stronger camp that brother or that sister should reach out to you later and say you know what i, I was going off you know shalakia um you know look the water for just giving me that the water for telling me that you know um you know like for instance if i got spinach in my teeth you know i expect you to tell me i got something in my teeth some food in my teeth or if I got like, you know, um, like a booger in my nose, right? You know, <laughs> you know, it's it, it's just, it's common courtesy and it's love to show me, to tell me, hey, man, 
you, you know, fix your nose or, or, you know, look in the mirror. Check this stuff out. Right. But if you don't got love for me and, I, and, and, and if you let me walk off with, with spinach in my teeth, then I'm going to look in the mirror and I'm going to be like, yo, man, this brother didn't even tell me that. Right. So it, it's very good. It's very. um, um, How do I say it? it's 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 vital that brothers tell brothers when they're going off and to show them and we would call we, we would call rebuke. But to show them when they're going off, to show them how they can do better. Right. So um, real quick, let's go to um, uh, matter of fact, before we get to Leviticus, because I want to get to Leviticus 19 and 15. But before we get that, you know, let's go into the um, to, to what um, what um, what we're talking about in the New Testament. Right. The quote unquote New Testament this is first Peter four and 17. Um, Shalaki. Um. Yeah, this is it. For the time has come that the judgment must begin at the house of the Most High. So judgment is all through the scripture. We all got to go through judgment. We all got to go through it. We all have to, right? So I'd rather you judge me than let the Most High judge me. Because if you judge me, you're just going to tell me where I need to get better at. If the Most High judge me, it might come with, you know, uh, something more consequential. Or it may come with, with even death, right? Because you know how the most high get down. It might be a situation where, hey, brothers ain't telling brothers, man. You might put that brother's life in danger, right? And his family may suffer as a result. It says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of the most high. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of the most high? So that's what I was saying, right? If 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 judgment starts at Israel, you know, then the people that's that's not believing, the non-believers, the two thirds, the other nations, what is their judgment going to look like? Right? They don't obey the gospel of the Most High. They're not keeping these law, statutes, and commandments, or they hear the they they hear the word and still don't even consider following the laws. That's a special type of judgment, right? Now let's get to Leviticus 19.15 because <clears throat> one of the things that, you know, I wanted to kind of get to was how our people don't like rebuke, you know, and this is what got us in trouble because if rebuke, if, if brothers were rebuking brothers in the camps and if brothers were rebuking brothers that was going off in the congregation, then that would tighten up loose ends, Right. Now, this is um, uh, Leviticus 19 and, and 2. Let's start at 2. Speak unto the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them, Ye shall be set apart, for I, the Most High, your power am set apart. Ye shall fear every man, his mother, and his father, and keep my Sabbaths. I am the Most High, your power. Right? So so when it says, fear the man, fear them, every man should fear his mother and father, you know, this means to listen to your mom and dad, listen to your father, listen to your mother. Going back to Exodus 21, um, Exodus 20, Exodus 20, uh, it goes into that, right? Where brothers was literally putting their children to death because, you know, they they just did not get it. And they, they, they brought them to the elders, the elders would stone them because essentially you would like, you have to keep sin out the camp. Right now, let's let's scroll down to 15. Right. It says ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment, no unrighteousness in judgment. So if you know what righteousness is, right. Um, matter of fact, let's just let's, let's hold that. Let's go to Isaiah 42 and 21, I believe. Let's just let's see if this is it. Isaiah 42 and 21. Um, the Lord, the Most High is well pleased for his righteousness sake. He will magnify the law and make it honorable. So the Most High is well pleased for righteousness sake. Right. And he will magnify the law and make it honorable. So this is when it's talking about the law being a part of righteousness. Right. Um, let's get Deuteronomy 6 and 25. It says, and it shall be 
our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments before the Most High our power as he hath commanded us. Right. And then um, I just want to get one more and then we'll go back to Leviticus 19. Give me um, Psalm 119 and 142. Right. It says thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. Right. So there you got it right there. This is like three of three witnesses, three or four witnesses that's telling us that the law and righteousness is synonymous. It's pretty much the same thing. Right. If you're righteous, then you're going to keep the law. Right. Now, it's telling you right here in Leviticus 19, you shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. So when you're judging. Right. There's no such thing as um, doing things um, that you want to do it the way you want to do it. It has to go by the letter of the law. Right. And it further uh, explains thou shalt not respect the person of the poor nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor. Now, we understand that thy neighbor is your brother, your fellow Israelite. Right. But it also tells you what not to respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty. So so, um, you know, what's funny is I was looking at the um, the the judgment the, the the judge symbol that every lawyer has, which is the scale um, of good and bad. And then there's a woman that's blindfolded. Right. And it's and it just kind of dawned on me that we understand what that balance is, that balance is, you know, good and bad so the more the more bad i do um my my my, my scale is going to tip that way right the, the 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 good i do the uh the, the scale is going to tip the other way right but that blindfold is supposed to be symbolic of not being able to see who you're judging and this is vital because if you look at how we do things now you know, we have a lot of bias and we're biased towards our brothers and sisters that that we like. Right. Or they have a higher statue or they have a a, a, a a better reputation. Right. This is how celebrities are able to get off on crimes that you and I wouldn't get off with. Right. Because America and, and you know, this nation has taught itself to respect the mighty. Right. And, and to not have respect for the poor. This is why our men are incarcerated at a high at the highest level because they don't have respect. Right. A black man and a black, a, a so-called black man and a so-called white man can do the same crime in the same town at the same time with the same priors. Right. And, and essentially get two different times. Right. That's because the judgment system and the judicial system here in America is going to have, um, you know, they're going to have respect towards the mighty and not respect towards the, uh, the, 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 the poor, right? It says, let me just hit verse 15 again. You shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shall not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness, only in righteousness, shalt thou judge thy neighbor. So when Tupac has that song saying only God can judge me and your, 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 your pastor says that you can't judge me, you can't judge me, man, that's 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 bogus. That's a damn lie. Right. We're going to get some more precepts through the spirit of how about Shimi how shy. Right. Let's go to second Corinthians two and 15. I'm sorry. I should like it. First Corinthians two and 15. It says, but he that is spiritual judges all things yet. He himself is judge of no man. Now, if you get that in another, in another translation, it's basically saying that, yeah, when you're spiritual, you can judge each and everything that comes across your face, your face. Right. But at the same time, people that are not as spiritual can't judge the man that is spiritual. Right. And Yahweh Shai talks about that in Matthew 7. All right. Let's go to Matthew 7. Let's go. Matthew 7, verse 1. Judge not that ye be not judged. Right? That's what the Christians like to go to. 
and 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 whoever we on the street talking to, they always they they know these scriptures, right? They know this scripture. They know John three sixteen. They they brainwash it, but they don't understand it, right? But through the Spirit we give edification, right? For with what judgment ye judge, shall ye be judged? And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why, and why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considereth not the beam that is in thine own eye? So you have to be righteous if you're going to be sitting here judging folks. This is why it's good to not be a hypocrite. This is where the hypocrite um, comes in. Because a hypocrite will put his cigarette out and then go out there in the pulpit until you don't smoke. And they keep your body as a temple. Right? But he, you know, he's still smoking cigarettes. Right? Verse four, or how wilt thou say to thy brother, let me pull out the mote out of thine eye and behold, a beam is in thine own eye. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam out of thine own eye. So what it's saying is first take care of yourself, become spiritual, become righteous before you start, you know, doing the judgment on your own. Right. And then it says, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the mote out of thy brother's eye. And this is how Yahweh I talk, man. He taught very poetic, right? And and then shalt thou see clearly. So then you'll be able to see clearly because you're understanding where he's going off at. You quit smoking and you're not going back. Now it's easy to say, hey, you know, stop smoking, brother, right? Keep your body as a temple. And that's just an example I'm giving, right? So so that's that's it on that, right? And let's go to Galatians 6 and 4. All right, let's go to Galatians chapter 6, verse 4. And it says, but let every man prove his own work. Let's start at 1, Shalakia. I wanted 1. It says, Galatians 6 and 1. Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, which is his sin, right? And, he's, and he stays in his sin. Ye which are spiritual, restore such a one. In the spirit of meekness, considering thyself least, thou also be tempted. Right? So it's it's telling you right here what, what, what the brother is telling you right here is, you know, if if you see a brother that's in his folly and he's staying in his folly, which a lot of not ninety percent of the camps out here that's teaching, we see folly every Saturday, every Friday night. Whenever brothers is out there teaching, you know, you're gonna see that folly. You're gonna see brothers in their own fault, right? When you're spiritual, we have to restore, we have to give back, we have to give him or her or whoever that person is, right? That 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 spirit, that zeal back. Right? You but but you do it by telling them where they going off at, right? You tell them that. Isaiah 58 and 1. Everybody knows this one, right? This is the one that everybody knows. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. This is judgment. Literally, this is judgment right here that Isaiah is doing, right? He's, Isaiah, when he says, cry aloud and spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Now, when you're showing the people their transgression, you're literally judging Well, what they would say judging. But I call it rebuke or edifying or correction. We all need this in our life, man. Right? All praises. I'm not going to be too much longer. Um, I want to get Proverbs 31 and 9. All right? That's another precept on us being able to judge right and judgment, right? It says, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. Right? Open thy mouth and judge righteously so yes we can judge now let's get a um a, a, a precept to that right because it says to plead the cause of the needy to of the poor right so this is first samuel 20 and let's go at verse 32 and if you know the story of this this is jonathan you know david king david's best friend but which is also saul's son right so jonathan is is caught between his father and his best friend Right. And, and and but Jonathan does the righteous thing because Saul is going off. Saul is on his way out and David's coming in. Right. 
And this is what Jonathan said. And Jonathan answered Saul, his father, and said unto him, Wherefore shall he be slain? What hath he done? So what you're seeing right here is Jonathan literally, um, um, you know, sticking his neck out there for his brother, you know, and, and, and being able to be that, um, that, that brother that's being able to help David, right? Now, real quick, let me just go ahead and get, um, let me go on my sword real quick. Um, cause I want to repool Proverbs 31 and 9. All praises. It says, open thy mouth, judge righteously, and plead the cause of the poor and needy. So we're supposed to be pleading the cause of the poor and needy. We're pleading that. We're always out there pleading the case. We're like lawyers, man, for the people that don't know. Because the, the poor and the needy is the ones that don't know. So that's a good example of... Um, Proverbs 31 and 9, right? Let's go to Deuteronomy 1 and 16. Let's see what the Most High told, told us. He says, And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the causes between your brethren, and judge righteously between every man and his brother and the stranger that is with him. So it says, Judge righteously between every man, right? And his brother. And the person's. But you judge, don't have no respect. Don't when it says respect, don't sit here and say, Yeah, yeah, me and him go way back. I'm I'm gonna let him slide on this one. He didn't mean nothing by it. Well, brother, that, that brother's been, you know, dogging women out for, for 14 years. All right? He been he been going off for 14 years. The brother been doing X, Y, and Z. He been, you know, eating on atonement for 14 years. You gotta tell that brother, man, you're going off, right? It says, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is the most highs, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. Right? So that goes into if it's too if it's too dicey, it's too much, you don't understand it, you need edification. Hey, brothers gotta be humble enough to say, Hey, you know what? I don't have the full breakdown on that. Let me go to the leadership. Let me go to the most high. Let me go to Yahweh Shai. Let me go into the scriptures and find out how we deal with this situation. All right. Let's go to John 7, 24. John chapter 7, verse 24. Come. It says, judge not according to the appearance. So there you go, right? Off the face of man. Or you got brothers that go off the what they know or how they... Like, like, like what they think they know about their brother. It says, but judge righteous judgment. This kills any gray area. Right. All right. All praises. And then I'm about to finish it up. Let's go to Deuteronomy 16 and 19. It says, thou shalt not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons. Neither take a gift. For a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise, right? And pervert the words of the righteous, right? It says the gift, a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise. Now, where does this sound familiar from, right? About gifts. Don't take gifts as a re as to, to cloud your judgment, to cloud your decision making, Right? We, we see that in uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, right? Um, here we go. Shalaki. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, it says, Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Right? So if you, if you, if you going off gifts and you getting easily bribed, then, you know, hey, and look, what's crazy about that is our forefathers... You know, as righteous as they were and as mighty as they were, they fell under the bribery scene and they were getting bribed by other nations and they were going off. And then you got these head leaders telling the people to go off. Right. Then the congregation goes off and the people are going to continue to stay in sin and stay oppressed and stay under rulership of other heathen nations. Right. All praises. And then let's just go to. um. Um, Proverbs 29 and 7. 
Shalaki, Proverbs 29 and 7. It says, The righteous considereth the cause of the poor, but the re but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Right? So this goes back to um Jonathan and David, right? Jonathan was that brother that was considering the, the, the cause of the poor, David being the poor, right? But the wicked, right, which was Saul at that time, but the wicked regardeth not to know it. Right. And, um, you know, with that being said, man, you know, hopefully this was good edification, um, you know, and through the spirit, man, we was able to get through this. Um, let me just get one more and then I'm going to go on that note. Let's go to Isaiah 1 and 17. <clears throat> it says, um, Shalaki, Shalaki, it's late, um, you know, but through the spirit, man. This is meditating on this because, you know, brotherly love is important, right? It says, learn to Isaiah 1 and 17, learn to do well, seek judgment, seek judgment, right? Some people run from judgment. It says to seek judgment and relieve the oppressed, judge the fatherless, plead for the widow, right? Plead for the widow, right? And so with that being said, man, I just want to give all praises to the Most High God, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, for just giving us this edification. Hopefully y'all found this edifying. And, um, you know, um, you know, just like the video if you can, um, you know, and, and, you know, thank you for your time. And, you know, I just give all praises to the brothers out there that's pushing this truth and the sisters at home that's holding it down for the brothers and, you know, um, being sincere in this word, man, because time is coming up, right? Time is coming up. And we want to make sure that we got that brotherly love. And hopefully I can do another video soon going into, um, you know, just, you know, what, what dwelling in unity and brother, brotherly love looks like and how it's supposed to look. But right now, let's just want, I just want to kind of put a video out on the judgment and, and, and how we judge each other and how we get each other to be, um, you know, squared up and, and 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 ready to go right because if i look out for you and i'm telling you where you're going off at then i'm like i'm making sure that you know how to further um um become efficient and become uh you know good at, at being um following the laws man right and become a better student and a better follower of the most high right so so with that being said man i'm not gonna hold you up all praise to you. How about Shimmy? How was shy?